Okay, uh, good morning everyone and uh, thank you WSO2 for this opportunity uh, to present uh, Bhutan's uh, e-government journey. Uh, uh, it's it's uh, a wonderful opportunity for us to share what uh, Bhutan has done on our uh, e-government journey and uh, an even bigger opportunity to hear and uh, see if there are any comments and suggestions so that we can further improve on what we have uh, done so far. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar, Bhutan is an extremely uh, you know, small country with an even smaller population. We are in between uh, China and India. Uh, we are uh, divided into uh, 20 uh, districts and uh, 205 uh, gyoks. They are essentially blocks of uh, villages. Um, and we transitioned uh, peacefully uh, from um, um, an absolute monarchy to a democratic uh, constitutional monarchy in 2008. Uh, uh, a transition that was actually led uh, by uh, our king himself. Um, in terms of our development philosophy, um, um, we have it uh, mentioned in our constitution itself that uh, uh, GNH uh, or uh, gross uh, national happiness is uh, the primary uh, objective of the state. Uh, it is a, a condition that uh, needs to be provided uh, by the state so that our uh, populace may uh, pursue it. And uh, um, uh, the four pillars uh, that have been identified uh, to pursue uh, GNH uh, focuses on, of course, uh, uh, sustainable so socioeconomic uh, development, uh, good governance, uh, preservation and promotion of our culture and uh, environmental uh, protection. And uh, leveraging on this, uh, we have developed uh, our uh, ICT vision, uh, which is an ICT-enabled knowledge society as a foundation for gross national happiness. Um, so uh, to talk about our ICT journey, um, we began um, in earnest our uh, development efforts uh, uh, very recently, but uh, uh, we introduced uh, internet uh, in Bhutan in, um, in 1999. And since then, our focus has largely been on uh, deploying infrastructure across the country. Uh, as we can see, we uh, leveraged on our uh, power uh, infrastructure to uh, take advantage of uh, that infrastructure to deploy uh, fiber optic uh, uh, cables across the country. And so far we um, have uh, fiber uh, connecting all the districts uh, in the country and uh, going down to connecting 201 of those 205 uh, sub-districts. Uh, leveraging on this uh, infrastructure, which we provide uh, free of cost to our uh, telcos and our ISPs, uh, we have uh, significantly uh, enhanced uh, our uh, mobile connectivity and uh, we provide it at uh, uh, relatively uh, affordable uh, uh, pricing. Uh, I think uh, according to the ITU, uh, we are uh, one of very few LDCs that have uh, achieved the target for affordability uh, in terms of um, uh, in internet connectivity. Um, we also have uh, uh, a very big uh, rural populace and because of that uh, we have uh, 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 to facilitate with uh, access to the internet we have uh, focused on uh, uh, community centers that uh, uh, that assist in uh, access uh, to to online services and uh, to the internet itself. So we have about 200 uh, community centers so far. Uh, we have also focused on uh, 
uh, transforming our uh, government systems to online uh, services. And uh, so far we have uh, over uh, 200 uh, online G2C services. Um, and um, um, we've been actually able to uh, leverage uh, WS, WSO2's, uh, 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 the, um, um, uh, the integration uh, platform uh, to uh, actually uh, enable us to share uh, data across uh, different systems to provide uh, these online uh, services. Um, uh, moving, uh, looking ahead, uh, what we see is uh, uh, while we have um, uh, some online services uh, which uh, which have uh, uh, fairly good uh, usage, uh, there are certain limitations. Uh, for example, uh, in terms of legality of uh, applying for online services, there is a need uh, to uh, to authenticate. Uh, 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 citizens and uh, residents uh, uh, online uh, so that uh, people can apply uh, services end-to-end um, -end, uh, um, and uh, therefore we are focusing on uh, um, by uh, 2023 in fact uh, much earlier to that by 20 uh, most likely by sometime by 2021 uh, to uh, roll out a national uh, digital identity, which would enable us to provide uh, services end-to-end uh, -end online. Uh, we are also uh, focusing on um, um, uh, a complete uh, um, uh, digital uh, transformation and uh, inspired by uh, His Majesty's, uh, His Majesty the King's uh, vision uh, to make uh, Bhutan uh, a technology-enabled uh, and driven uh, uh, country. Um, uh, we have even introduced uh, ICT uh, uh, and programming uh, as a mandatory uh, subject in all our public schools. And to facilitate that, uh, we will also be uh, uh, focusing on uh, significantly enhancing our uh, connectivity. Uh, we are taking uh, fiber optic connections to all our schools, hospitals, et cetera. And uh, of course, uh, the, the idea behind uh, um, uh, improving uh, online services uh, is to have end-to-end uh, -end, uh, integrated uh, services, uh, which I will uh, touch on in the, in the next slide. Uh, so in terms of in terms of our um, uh, the principles that drive uh, our online services, so uh, we have uh, um, uh, recently also passed our e-governance policy, uh, which focuses largely on firstly uh, looking at uh, citizen-centric services. Uh, so we're try trying to transform from. Uh, online services that are focused uh, more on um, uh, the agency uh, providing services to um, taking a more uh, citizen uh, centric uh, uh, perspective that uh, is uh, that uh, ignores uh, you know the the different uh, uh, government uh, structures and the agencies that uh, that are involved uh, in delivering services and we are largely uh, using APIs to uh, connect services uh, across uh, uh, these government agencies. The second principle is uh, we believe that as a small country and uh, with, uh, with a very small populace, we need to uh, be uh, as efficient as possible. And therefore, uh, this whole of government approach, uh, uh, rather than having uh, every government agency uh, uh, you know, um, deliver uh, things in, in silos, uh, we take a much more uh, coordinated approach to ensure that uh, uh, 
uh, that as far as uh, any uh, citizen or resident interacts with the government, uh, they, they are oblivious of the interactions that happen at the back and uh, they are provided a much more uh, uniform uh, view of the government. And we also uh, uh, focused on um, uh, sharing uh, um, the investments um, across uh, government. Um, in terms of uh, guided by these uh, these core uh, principles, uh, what we what we will strive to achieve is uh, that we transform. Um, as many of our government services uh, through a digital platform, so, and therefore uh, digital by default. Uh, we will ensure that uh, whatever uh, ICT assets that we have, uh, we will try and share it uh, as far as possible, invest once and uh, reuse across uh, government. Uh, we are also focusing on uh, single sources of truth. Uh, in the past, uh, the way that uh, uh, government agencies would function would be that they uh, uh, function uh, completely as uh, individual um, organizations that uh, collect uh, data uh, they, you know, as uh, required by them. Uh, so uh, the shift now is to try and identify um, government uh, owners of, of data. Uh, and uh, these agencies are responsible for the collection management uh, and sharing of those uh, that data. And therefore, we eliminate the need for uh, uh, duplicate, uh, you know, uh, uh, data collection from um, our uh, residents. Um, reducing the burden on the citizens as well as also uh, making the government uh, much more uh, effective uh, in in managing our resources uh, of course uh, transitioning to uh, a fully uh, digital uh, uh, country uh, information security and privacy is also uh, extremely uh, important and therefore there will be uh, a lot of focus on um, on improving that uh, we also realized that uh, a lot of our uh, ICT initiatives uh, uh, fail largely because they are either uh, uh, driven primarily by the IT uh, personnel in the organizations. And uh, because of that, uh, a lot of uh, requirements and needs are not really uh, met. And therefore, um, uh, as a policy, uh, we are moving to business-driven initiatives. And, and what we mean by that is uh, we will not invest in technology for the sake of technology itself. Uh, uh, we will do it uh, uh, only if there is a business uh, uh, need uh, behind it. And therefore, we identify technology to solve business problems. And largely, of course, uh, we also realized uh, that a lot of our uh, investments um, have a, a problem with sustainability. And uh, this is mainly because uh, we, uh, we fail to fully uh, appreciate the total cost, cost of ownership uh, whenever we make a, a digital uh, investment. And therefore, uh, we will now move uh, towards uh, any uh, government investment in uh, uh, digital uh, projects uh, that uh, before the project is approved, uh, a full uh, total cost of ownership assessment is carried out. Um, and uh, moving on to the, the overall uh, infrastructure in terms of um, uh, how uh, we, we leverage APIs, uh, uh, powered by WSO2's uh, uh, enterprise uh, service bus, uh, et cetera. Uh, we are focused on largely uh, developing uh, data hubs as single sources of truth uh, for uh, use by different uh, uh, government agencies. And uh, uh, 
these are uh, this is a slide which kind of showcases uh, some of the uh, the main uh, data hubs uh, that we have uh, identified um, starting from citizen uh, land vehicle business uh, information about civil servants and so on and so forth and uh, using uh, our uh, national uh, data exchange uh, all the different uh, uh, systems uh, that we develop uh, leverages on the data that uh, from these uh, different uh, data hubs. Um, these are some of the uh, uh, tools uh, from uh, WSO2. Uh, as you can see, uh, focusing largely on uh, API, uh, enabling of, of uh, APIs. Uh, we also use uh, WSO2's uh, identity server uh, to provide a single uh, uh, access platform um, so that uh, citizens don't need to keep on registering uh, again and again when they uh, access uh, their services. Uh, so in terms of the current status, in terms of uh, the different APIs that we have, uh, uh, so far, we have um, about uh, seven uh, common APIs. Uh, this, is, this is largely used across uh, all the government uh, uh, systems. Uh, as, as we uh, developed uh, and got more experience with, uh, um, with how uh, we could use APIs uh, in government, we realized that uh, uh, most of the government systems uh, could also potentially uh, uh, act as some uh, minor uh, data hubs because the need for uh, information uh, sharing across government uh, uh, became very apparent. And uh, this was even more apparent uh, during this uh, uh, COVID uh, pandemic when uh, we had to uh, develop uh, a lot of uh, new systems um, and uh, we needed to develop these systems in the shortest uh, time and we realized that we already have a lot of uh, uh, assets a lot of uh, data that already existed in many of our government systems so uh, using this uh, uh, this infrastructure, we were able to actually develop a lot of systems. Um, uh, this is some uh, statistics in terms of uh, how uh, our citizens uh, uh, access uh, services and uh, in terms of the API calls, uh, you could see that uh, our land uh, service is quite, uh, is the most popular and we also of course have uh, access to our citizen uh, uh, data hub through our APIs. Uh, so talking talking about uh, how uh, having this API uh, platform, uh, how it uh, helped us. So we had to develop a lot of systems uh, so the central GIS dashboard is uh, a system that um, uh, provided um, um, a lot of information um, uh, to the decision makers uh, in terms of what was happening on the ground. And uh, uh, we were able to provide this real-time uh, access to uh, data by connecting uh, uh, transactional uh, systems on the ground and uh, we were able to consolidate this information uh, using APIs and uh, combining it with uh, 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 a GIS dashboard, uh, providing uh, location-based uh, information. Um, and uh, uh, this was uh, extremely useful uh, during the uh, during the the COVID. Uh, uh, pandemic, and we believe that it will also uh, prove to be uh, an extremely useful tool for uh, decision making as we move forward. Uh, we also had to uh, build um, uh, a number of systems which needed to be uh, quickly patched up, uh, uh, you know, and uh, 
Uh, and we, we, we would not have been able to do that if we didn't actually have a robust uh, um, um, API platform, which enabled us to quickly access uh, the existing um, uh, government systems that we had. So uh, we are uh, we were actually able to do that because of uh, the the platform that we have. Uh, so I'll cut. I think uh, that's all I have for in terms of my presentation.